her name has made headlines nationwide. It's been more than four months since the Charlotte native went on a trip with friends to Cabo, Mexico. She didn't return home alive. Mexican authorities have ruled her death a femicide or murder. The FBI also investigating her death. But here we are four months later, still no arrests in this case, leaving many questions like how did this happen and who did it? Today, the attorney for Shanquilla Robinson's family sent us a copy of a letter. The Robinson family and a national activist are now calling on President Biden and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken to personally help to bring justice for Shanquilla. The letter to the president also included a packet of Mexican police records that had not been released previously and an autopsy. There's a copy of it for you right here. We went through it very carefully and we found there are some key takeaways here for you to understand. First off, this was performed the day after Shanquala was killed. It shows Shanquala died from atlas and medullary dislocation. In simple terms, that's a broken neck and a severe spinal cord injury. The autopsy also found contusions or blunt force trauma to her front region or her head and parts of her pelvis as well. And there were also friction burns on her body. In early November, this video showing an alleged fight went viral on social media. Now, we don't know if she sustained those injuries described in the autopsy during this fight, but her family says this is Shanquala in the video. And the FBI in Charlotte tells WBTV they were also sent that video. Now, in the packet of documents they provide by the law firm representing Shanquala's family were those police reports. They interviewed someone who interacted with Shanquala and her friends while in Cabo. Here's our Brandon Hamilton's report. An employee at the resort Robinson was staying at describes providing assistance to the friends in Robinson inside their Cabo, Mexico villa. That unidentified male employee told investigators the group arrived on the night of October the 28th. He said he met Robinson around dinner time. He added she was the last to the table, quote, seemed not to fit in with the others and was out of place at that party. Obviously, Shanquilla was attacked by the by someone in the group, one of the travel mates. So the employee describing their interaction lets me know that the environment that she was in for her last moments wasn't a positive one. The next day, October the 29th, as we've reported, Robinson was found dead. According to the transcript, the resort employee received a text from the main guest asking about medical service and added that Robinson had alcohol poisoning. Employee later learned Robinson had died. In the initial death certificate provided by her family, a spinal cord injury was listed as the cause of death. In the hours after her death, again, according to the transcript, the group requested a driver to go to dinner. They would never come back to the villa. After seeing this viral video, the employee in the transcript said, quote, I realized that practically the main guest had manipulated me with the information she provided of what happened to leave the country as soon as possible. And our Brandon Hamilton joins us here in studio with more on this. I know you've been following this uh, story very, very closely, really more than anybody else reporting on this. What stood out to you most? What did you learn from these documents today? Yeah, what, when you're reading the documents, what stood out was that interview from the employee that worked at that mm -hmm. villa where they stayed at. He talked about when those guests arrived. He talked about when they got there, how Shanquilla was. So from reading that, he said that she seemed like she didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. So that leads you to think what happened in those hours to make her standoffish. Because you yeah. would think if you went on a trip with someone. With friends, with another thought, country, right? Yeah. You would also be happy and, you mm -hmm. know, be more jubile in, in, in your expressions of wanting to be there. So that stood out for me, just the fact that he says she didn't seem like she wanted to be there. Interesting. Uh, what is the Robinson family hoping the Biden administration can do at this point? Yep, so they've been calling on this diplomatic intervention, which essentially is terms of having the president or someone of top authority in our federal government get involved, get involved by saying and doing to speed up the investigation mm -hmm. process. And by speeding that up, you know, the, the attorneys, they've been saying this when they went to D.C. earlier uh, this month and also in the letter, they want either the United States government to mm -hmm. either extradite that one person that Mexico has said is a direct aggressor. They want that one person extradited back to Mexico mm -hmm. or to have the United States government take over the investigation and prosecute the person or persons yeah. in the U.S. And they want it done swiftly. 
And bottom line, the FBI really not saying a whole lot, just no. that they're investigating, yep. right? All right, our Brandon Hamilton has been on top of this story. He will continue to do so. Brandon, yep. thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you have our WBTV News app, you were the first to hear about these new developments today. We pushed this out as breaking news this afternoon. You can keep up with the latest on the investigation into Shanquella's death by downloading the WBTV News app. It is free in your app app.